decade of America. Starring Lloyd Nolan in Traveler to Arkansas on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. If you have ever worn a raincoat or a sport coat after it has been cleaned and made the annoying discovery that the coat has lost its water repellency, you'll appreciate the protection that DuPont Zeeland Durable Repellent Finish offers. For Zeeland is different. Unlike ordinary water repellent, Zeeland continues to give protection even after many washings or cleanings. Look for the Zeeland tag when you buy rainwear or sportswear. DuPont Zeeland is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Company presents Traveler to Arkansas, starring Lloyd Nolan as Sergeant Pop Polarski on the Cavalcade of America. <laughs> on a civilian train heading south and west is Pop Polarski, ex-sergeant in Army Ordnance. He's one of those men above military age whose mechanical skill formed the backbone of the Ordnance Department in its battle of supply. Pop is sitting in the smoker when a soldier enters. No, it couldn't be, huh? Pop Pulaski. Lou, hello, Lou. How are you? How are you? Sit down. <laughs> well, gee, I never would have known you, Pop. Oh, well, to tell the truth, I sometimes don't know myself in these civvies. <laughs> Hey, uh, when are you getting out, Lou? Soon, I hope. Uh, where are you heading all slicked up? Oh, I'm on my way to Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock? Uh -huh. Well, what happened to the old garage in Hoboken, New Jersey? Ah, I sold the garage. I figured I'd settle down in Little Rock. Uh -huh. Well, what's the attraction down there? Oh, I, uh, well, it's, uh, here, here have a cigarette, hmm? Hey, very fancy cigarette case. Uh, you like it? Neat, chum, neat. <laughs> You never went in for stuff like that before. Well, you live and learn, Lou, you know. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Whose picture you got in that case? Oh, uh, her. Well, that's a girlfriend. Uh-huh, just like that, he says that that's the girlfriend. Pop, what's come over you? Well, and what do you mean? Yeah, civilian life must be doing wonders for you. Back in Africa and at Anzio, I always, always figured you was the last bird in the world to be carrying around some dame's picture. You you were always, uh, well, uh... A sourpuss, huh? Well, frankly, yes. A sour puss. Yeah, I know. Every guy in the company had me tagged for a killjoy. Oh, you were a busy guy. You had a lot of responsibilities. You had a right to kick. I did my share of beefing, all right. Oh, not so much except to ride the eager beavers. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that kid from down south someplace? Oh, yeah, yeah. Arky. Yeah. Just before Anzio. He was in and out of your hair like a cootie. Yeah, fresh out of tank school at Apathy. Yeah. Full of the notion that he knew more about tanks than the guys that designed them. Boy, you were sure pouring it on him when we hit the beach there. I was even beginning to feel sorry for the kid. Then I got hit. I bet you made an elk out of him before you got through, huh? Well, I'm not sure that he didn't make an elk out of me. Yeah? You know, I always wondered about that kid. Did he turn out all right? That kid, all right. Yeah. Let me tell you about him. See, after we turned you over to the medics, we worked our way inland about three miles, set up for our repair shop near the ammo dump. Yeah. Well, a lot of equipment had been damaged on the way in. <laughs> All right, get a wiggle on you guys. Time's a waste. Hey, Velasquez. Yes, Captain. We need tanks and half tracks. We need all the firepower we can muster. Got more men on the beach and we got equipment. So it's up to you mechanics to patch up everything that'll fire. Okay, Captain. Well, hop to it, Velasquez. Yes, sir. All right, you birds. Chin music won't win the war. Never mind the foxholes. We got work to do. Okay, we got work to do. Hey, uh, Pop, um, uh, back at the Aberdeen Tank School, they said, always dig in first. Secure your position against attack and air raid and... Will you shut up, Arky, and do as you're told? Hey, Brady. Yeah, Pop. Take a crew and get busy on them half-tracks. I'll be working on the tanks. Yeah, I, I can fix tanks, Pop. That's my specialty. Come on with me. Oh, boy, I get to fix the tank. That's what you think. I'll need you to hold the flashlight for me so I can see what I'm doing. Hold the flashlight? Oh, listen, Pop, I'm a mechanic. Back at the Aberdeen Tank this School... This doesn't happen to be the Aberdeen Tank School. This happens to be war. You know what Sherman said about war. Where I come from, the opinions of General Sherman weren't very highly regarded. He was a Yankee. Well, they named these tanks after him. That's good enough for me. Go on, hold that light. Well, I can just uh, hang it up here and be doing some mechanical work. 
Oh, gosh, I, I'm a mechanic. At tank school, they said I was the yeah, best. Yeah, sure, sure. You became a master mechanic in 90 days at Aberdeen. Why didn't you learn how to hold a light so a man can work by it? Okay, Pop. And stop calling me Pop. Well, all right. But everybody else calls you Pop. They happen to be very special friends of mine, which you don't happen to be. Uh, look, Sarge, you ain't doing that right. You pull back that lever, mesh the gear, and then slip in a cotter pin. Will you shut up and hold that light so I can see what I'm doing? But it won't work this way. Back at Aberdeen... If you they... say Aberdeen just once more, I'll... I'll wrap you one right in the field. It won't start unless you pull back that lever, mesh the gear, and slip in a cotter pin. Yeah, shut up. But I remember the blueprints back at... Don't... Don't say it, I... I can't take it. Go on, get out of here. Go dig yourself a foxhole and then pull it in after you. Go on, beat it. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, uh, Papa, here's a cotter pin to hold that lever in place. Will you get out of here? Okay, Pop. And don't call me Pop. Hey, Brady, how you coming with them half tracks? Uh, got them patched up and ready to roll. How about that tank? All set to go. They just brought in another tank. Come on, get busy on it. Oh, that infantry is sure catching it tonight. Yeah. Nights like this, I'm glad I'm a mud mechanic. Me too. The flaming onion is good enough in signal for me. We get the best of it all around. Yeah, we sure have. Infantry works 24 hours a day. We work only 20. <laughs> hey, you got a chew? Yeah, yeah. Gotta have something to keep me awake. Thanks. Hey, uh, when do they send in crews after this junk we put together? Oh, sooner or later. Uh, they always want this stuff right now. We work our heads to the bone, then it sets here in rust. Ah, uh, you're making training talk now, Brady. They'll be after your half tracks before daylight. Uh, I better get busy in that other tank. Thanks for the chore. Yeah. Hey, Papa, I got our foxhole all dug. Well, I thought I told you to pull it in after you. Say, what took you so long? I was uh, digging a specially big one. Now, wasting time, huh? I made it big enough for all of us. Listen, you. We're in enemy territory. Every man digs his own foxhole, understand? I was just trying to be helpful, sorry. When I want your help or your advice, I'll ask for it. You understand? Okay, Pop. And don't call me Pop. Okay, Sarge. I just figured it'd be easier to dig a big foxhole now than a lot of graves later on. Get over to that pile of small arms. We got plenty of fixing to do if we're going to keep our infantry fighting along this whole beachhead. Just as you say, Pop. And don't... Oh, let's see. Hey, Pop, help me uh, pull this lever in place, will you? Okay, Brady. Hey, don't you think you're a little tough on the kid? What do you want me to do, play tiddlywinks with him? Uh, you're the same sour push you ever was. Why don't you grow up? Now, listen, Brady. Just because we've been friendly for two years, there's no excuse to get personal with me. I'm not getting personal. I only said... You only said what you've always been saying. Giving me cockeyed advice. Why don't I stop being tough? Why don't I act like nice Nelly, I suppose? I'll act like I please, you understand? Okay, if it makes you happy. It makes me a good mechanic. That's all I care about. Furthermore, I've been in this business 20 years. No 90-day wonder fresh out of Aberdeen can teach me anything. Okay, calm yourself, pup. Hey, I'm stuck on this engine. Here, I'll tell you how to fix it. So you just pull back the lever, mesh the gear, slip in a cotter pin. It's easy. <laughs> Hey, Wolofsky. Yes, Captain. I got a report that a German tank's broken through our lines. It's heading this way. Oh, the recon must have spotted our ammunition dump. Could be. Better look to security. Yes, sir. All right, you guys, dig in and stand by for a ram. There's a German panther prowling this way. All right, dig in. Dig in. Hey, what's that? Explosion out there, Captain. Yeah, I got him spotted in my glasses. The German panther. He's on fire. Somebody caught the Molotov. Molotov cocktails. We learned all about them at Average. Shut up, Barky. Here goes the crew. We'll make a break for the woods. Uh, rats desert the sinking ship, huh? Pulaski. Yes, Cap. Grab your extinguishers and go after that tank. Bring it in. We can use it. Yes, sir. Arky, you go with Pop. Yes, sir. Brady, I want you to come with me. Yes. Okay, Pop. I'm ready. I, I got the tools and the extinguisher. Well, how do you like that? An assignment like this, and I draw the Aberdeen Eager Beaver. All right, come on, Rover boy. We got a tank to salvage. Fire out, all right. Well, she don't look so.
so bad except for that left thread where the fire was burning. What about the crew? Uh, uh, let me up on that tank. Uh, give me a hand. Now, wait a minute. If any of the crews are on, they'll, they'll be back now that we got the fire out. You got your tools, flashlight? Don't need one. Back at Aberdeen, I learned to take these Panther engines apart in the dark. Now, we're back at Aberdeen again. Maybe I better work on the inside. No, reckon you better patch the tread. I'm not so good at that. Oh, you're not so good, huh? You getting modest, then? No, I just know a better man when I see one. For instance? Sarge, I think you're a pretty smart guy. Oh, yeah, stop it. You're killing me. Now, get busy on that engine. We haven't got all night. Come on, up you go. She's still plenty hot. Get out. Get out off that tank, I tell you. Who do you think you are? The Statue of Liberty standing up there silhouetted against the sky? I wanted to see where them shots was coming from. Did you spot them? I, I think so. You keep down. Get your head blown off. We'll stay here behind this tank and wait them out. I told you to stay down. I just want to take one more look. Hey, I, I see one of them. Look out, a grenade. I'll get that dirty good... I got him, Pop, I got him. He suck up tall this pineapple and I got him on the wing. No. Uh, hey, Pop. Hey, Pop, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. I got nicked in the leg. Oh, Pop. Oh, are you bad hit? No, it's a flesh wound, that's all. We better get in, in this tank and get out of here. Okay. Uh, I'll drive the tank if you want me to. Yeah, give me a hand. I'll need help to get a port. No, oh, wait till I take a look. All clear. Up you go. Hit the deck. Did they get you, Bob? No. No, but I'm afraid I can't make it. My leg feels a little numb. Now, look. You're young and spry. I'll cover you while you get up there and take the tank and run her back in. I'll stay here. Oh, no, I'm not leaving you, Pop. Do as I say. Give me that rifle. I'm going to do a little coon hunting. Now, listen, you. You're under my orders. You take that tank and get it out of here. I can't make it, so it's up to you. If you think I'm leaving you here, you got another thing coming. I can go out and pick them Nazis off in this moonlight. Or back home in Arkansas, I was the best darn coon hunter in 411 County. Will you give me that rifle? You don't want to hold Come my on. arm like that, Sarge. Do you hear me? Give me that rifle and you get in that tank and take it back to the colonel. You better leave go of me, Pop. Don't call me. Sorry, Pop. I just had to do it. Now, if I can just spot them pole cats. How you feeling, Pop? I'm all right. Did those crowds get away? <laughs> Once I draw a bead, there ain't nothing gets away. I killed them both dead. You feel pretty cocky, huh? Well, we're bringing the tank back, ain't we? You know you went against my orders? Orders was to bring the tank back. Now, look here, you. You struck a sergeant. Sorry, Sergeant. You know I can have you court-martialed? Yes, Sergeant. You deliberately went against my orders, firing on those crowds. You wouldn't have given them orders, Sergeant, if you knew. Knew what? How good I was with a rifle. You, you just didn't reckon on me being a cracked shot in the moonlight. Now, look, Augie. You saved my life, so I'm not turning you in. But when we get off this beachhead, I'm having you transferred. But but I, I like it here uh, with you. But I don't. From now on, you're in a different army, so far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. You and him was alike as two peas in a pod. Me and who? What are you talking about? You and my father. Yeah, when Pop would get mad at me, he'd be sorry I was in his family. He used to make a powerful noise, but you could tell he didn't mean nothing. He was just mad. Well, if I was him, I'd have drowned you early. Gosh, you're really mad, ain't you? You're lucky I don't have your court martials, you young squirt. Now, come on, step on the gas. The quicker I'm ready, you, the better I like it. Okay, Pop. And... Don't call me Pop. You are listening to Lloyd Nolan as Sergeant Pop Polarski and Sam Edwards as Archie in Traveler to Arkansas on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry.
As our second act begins, Pop Pulaski of the U.S. Army Ordnance Department is nursing a sore jaw and an even more painful sense of vanity because of the Arkansas youngster in his outfit. But the job of repairing equipment inside the Anzio beachhead is proceeding smoothly. Yeah, how's the repair job coming, Pop? Well, it's not bad, Captain. Yeah. We've reconditioned uh, 122 rifles, 14 machine guns, two half-tracks, a couple of tanks, and we're just finishing up on that Panther. Hmm. I still don't see how you two brought that tank in last night without a dragon wagon. Oh, we got ways, you know. Yeah. How's the wound? Oh, it's a little sore. It'll heal right up. Must have been a close call. Uh, banged up your jaw a little, too, didn't they? The kid been talking to you, sir? No, 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 no. Say, you all right, Pop? I'm all right, sure, sure. All right, Captain. You have ready? Yeah, Pager wants you on the walkie-talkie, sir. I know what he wants. More time. We'll have that panther ready within an hour, sir. Well, Pop, how's it feel to be a hero? Cut it, will you? Gee whiz, I was only kidding. I said cut it. Suppose that hill Billy's been telling everybody he popped me on a jaw last night. Oh, so that's what happened. Now, don't try to cover up for him. I just heard about it from the captain. Oh, gee whiz, Pop. Why don't you let up on him? He's just a kid. Just hand me the ring. He, uh... room for us, Archie? Sure, plenty of room. File right in. Oh, boy, it's a pretty nice foxhole you got down here, Archie. Yeah, I built it special. Hey, that was pretty close, wasn't it, Pop? So what, Brady? So what? Okay, be that way. Here, yeah, Archie, you sure got an empty foxhole here. Nice and roomy. Yeah. A room to stretch out your legs if you want to. What are you trying to do? Set up for light housekeeping? Did they teach you this at Aberdeen? Nope. I learned it back home in Arkansas. When Pop uh, worked in the mines, I used to want to be a miner, so I I'd dig holes like this and fix them up. Sometimes Pop would help me with the digging, and we'd make them real comfortable. And then we'd tunnel right under our house, and Ma would get sore at us. And... Sounds like your old man was a kid at heart. Hey, uh... Who's the dame in the picture, Aki? Susanna Summers. Uh, she's too old for your girlfriend. Too young for your mother. I, that's my mom. Your mom? Darn nice looking woman. How'd she ever have a son like you? Oh, me? <laughs> oh, I, I took after my father. <laughs> hey, Sergeant, I'm sorry about what happened last night. Nobody asked you to be sorry about anything. I know you can lick me any time in a fair fight. You just didn't reckon on me swinging in the dark. We'll settle this some other time, my way. Oh, take it easy, Pop. Just wait till we get out of this mess. I'll knock your ears down. Oh, gosh, I don't want to fight you. It'd be like... Like... Like hitting your Pop, huh? Well, your dear little Pop's gonna give you the worst licking you ever got. Cut it, Pop. And... No, I'll... I'll be leaving you guys. What for? I don't like crowds. You don't have to bother. I'll go. Wait a minute, Archie. The firing stop. My mother always told me never to stay where I wasn't wanted. Well, your mother didn't tell you enough. I'll lay off, Pop. Maybe I ain't fit company for you, either. I'm beginning to think so. All right, so what? So I'm getting out of here, too. Well, go ahead. Hey, they're opening up again. Get back in here, Brady. Hey, where's the kid? Oh, he's out there looking for another foxhole. Hey, Arky, come back here, kid. In here. Head for the foxhole, you dummy. I'm going after him. Wait, Pop, you can't make it. Let go of me, will you? It's my fault. He's out there. I'm going after him. Hey, Doc. Doc, how is he? How's the kid, Doctor? Will he pull through? Well, he's got a chance, but it's a slim one. Yeah. He wouldn't be here now if you men hadn't carried him in here so carefully. Well, he got it pretty bad. No, worse than that. He's got a whole 20 millimeter shell in his stomach. He. He what? Yeah. It didn't explode. These x-rays confirm it all right. Is he here? Fuse points right at the, uh, Duodenum. Oh, and that, that's bad, huh? Yeah, plenty bad. It'll be something to talk about if he pulls through. If, if he pulls through. Well, I'll have to operate in two stages. First, I'll make an incision so we can remove the fuse from the shell. After that, it's still a major operation to remove the shell. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes, sir. Well, good, good luck, sir. You do the best you can for him, Doctor. He's a good kid. Wait a minute. You're an ordinance man, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. Well, the kid tells me you're the best. Oh, he said, he said that, sir, huh? Yeah, he was telling me how you brought in a tank single-handed. He told you that? Yeah. Now, look, I can handle the operation all right. 
The only thing that has me worried is removing the fuse. I'm afraid I'll foul it up and blow us all to bed. Oh, you mean that you... I want you to remove the fuse. Oh, oh no. No, I, I couldn't do that. I'd be scared. I'm clumsy. I'm just an old mechanic. I, uh... <laughs> you know, my fingers are all thumbs. I'd, I'd just be scared. Why, the kid was telling me you aren't afraid of anything. Well, uh, maybe not, but I'm afraid of myself. I, I just couldn't do it, Doctor. I'm afraid. Well, before you go, you might as well talk to the kid. You'll do that, won't you? Oh, sure. Sure, I'd be glad to talk to the kid. He's right over here. Well, Archie, how do you feel? Uh, all right, Doc. Sort of dizzy, though. Yeah. I brought somebody to see you, Archie. Feel strong enough to talk? Oh, sure. I'll be okay. Hi, right, kid. Pop. Oh, gee, Pop, I'm glad you came. Yeah. I, I've been wanting to talk to you to tell you how, how sorry I am about Now, you just take it easy, kid. You've got nothing to be sorry about. I'm the one that's sorry. I treated you rotten sometimes. I, I don't think I really meant it. It was just that, well, being a sergeant, you got a lot of responsibility. Sometimes you get tired and short-tempered. And you don't have much patience. And... Especially with wise kids who are always talking about Aberdeen. No, no. I, I, I've been an old crab kid. I, I... Oh, just like I've been saying. You, you're just like my pop was. Yeah, but what do you mean, like it was? Didn't you know? Oh, Pop's been dead three years. Oh. Gosh, I sure miss Pop. We used to go coon hunting in the moonlight. Just like it was that night that we went after that tank. And the hounds would bay and then they'd tree a coon and start in yelping and, and talk to me. And, and Pop. I guess you miss your pop pretty bad, don't you, Jim? Yeah. And I... I felt so lonesome in the army till I run across you. And you look so much like him. And you bawl me out for being dumb, just like pop used to. We're ready for the operation, sir. Okay, Corporal. Anesthesia ready? All set. Well, kid, I reckon I better say it. Sorry, I, I feel kind of scared. You gotta help us, Sarge? I, I'm afraid, Sarge. Where do you get that Sarge stuff? You call me Pop, son. You just relax, Buzz. Pop's gonna stand right here beside you. The first incision is made. Come around here, sir. Yes, sir. Corporal, help him into those rubber gloves. Yes, sir. Right, Lieutenant, I, I just ain't got the moxie. I'm... Here you are, Sarge. Hurry, Sarge. Come right around here. I see I've got the nose of the shell uncovered. Look, I'm, I'm so darn nervous. I'm a mechanic. I've I never been in a spot like this before, you see. Hemoglobin's down, Doctor. Have a transfusion, Corporal. 500 cc. Yes, sir. Can you reach it, Sarge? I... I think so. Here. Here, take it, somebody. Take it. I, I, I got it. I got it. Now I can remove the shell. Sergeant, give me a hand there, will you? Where are you, Sergeant? Sir, the sergeant just fainted. Hey, I... Uh, what's the matter? Where, where am I? Oh, okay, Sergeant, you're all right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the ether must have gotten me, huh? Mm. Say, where's the kid? How is he? Sergeant Pulaski, I'm happy to inform you that you're the proud father of a 20-millimeter shell. <laughs> so that's why you're going to Arkansas. See the kid, huh? Oh, no, no. The kid's at Halloran. 
We saw him every day for a month. We? Yeah, me and Susanna. Susanna? Yeah. Yeah, this is Susanna. See the picture in the cigarette case? Oh, that's the kid's mother, huh? Uh, yep. <laughs> I guess the kid never did reckon on this happening. Didn't reckon on what? Well, I'm going to be Archie's real pop from now on. No. Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's why you're going down there, then. To, to marry Susanna. Gosh, you lunkhead. Why do you think I'm going to Arkansas? To see Bob Burns' Uncle Snazzy? <laughs> Turn to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gaines Whitman. It is good news that hairbrushes with nylon bristles are appearing again in the stores. Hairbrush bristles, you know, as well as stockings, are made of DuPont nylon. A filament of nylon yarn is so fine you could hardly see it. Nylon bristles are much thicker. More water-resistant than natural bristles, they shed water like the proverbial duck's back. And nylon bristled hairbrushes are extremely easy to keep clean. Best of all, nylon bristles are stronger. They outlast hog bristles at least three to one. The back and handle of many brushes now on sale are made of DuPont Lucite metal metacrylate plastic. Lustrous, clear as the finest crystal, they're light in weight and always glistening clean. They're warm and pleasant to the touch. But there's a practical side to Lucite. It's strong, tough, long-lasting. Its good looks are built in for keeps. Hair oils, even spankings, hold no fear for Lucite. During the war, practically all the nylon bristles the DuPont Company could make were used for toothbrushes, paint brushes for the Navy, and industrial brushes. Brushes used in industry have to stand just about anything, boiling water, solvents, and alkaline solutions, oils, and constant flexing and rubbing at speeds as high as 3,000 revolutions per minute. It would be hard to find tests would prove more conclusively that nylon bristles are strong and long-lasting. Brushes made with DuPont nylon bristles, including household brushes, offer a striking example of what we mean when we speak of DuPont products as better things for better living through chemistry. And now, here is Lloyd Nolan. Next. Monday evening, Cavalcade will present as its star a very good friend of mine, that fine actor, Thomas Mitchell. And for his play, there will be a suspenseful story of one of this war's great inventions, radar, and how it was able to save a life in the midst of the fighting. It's a great part for Tommy Mitchell. You can be sure I'll be listening right along with you. So be in the audience, won't you? For Direction Home, starring Thomas Mitchell on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Sam Edwards played the part of Archie. Our Cavalcade play was written by Charles Rabiner. Lloyd Nolan is currently appearing in the 20th Century Fox production, The House on 92nd Street. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next Monday evening to Thomas Mitchell in Direction Home on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.